So, the fly I'm going to tie for you today is uh, uh, one that I've caught a ton of fish on this year. I just uh, kind of randomly experimented with something back in June, and um, man, it just it's caught fish every single time I've I've fished it. Anything from cuts to rainbows to whitefish, I've even caught a bull trout on it. Um, so it, it seems to be uh, a pretty good fly. I'm going to call it my uh, MLF Never Fail Stonefly Nymph. Uh, so what I've got starting out with here is a, uh, a Mustad uh, Streamer Limerick Hook size 8. Uh, it's 3 extra heavy, 7 extra long. Uh, so it's, it's, a big, it's a big hook. I like to tie these ones big and it's nice and heavy as well. Um, not quite heavy enough. I still add a few wraps. Of, uh, of weight wire here. Okay, uh, I use lead. I know a lot of people don't like to. It's what I have, so that's what I'm gonna put on there. So I put on, I don't know, maybe around 10 wraps or so, something like that. I don't really count it. I just kind of look until it's about that big. And then I just pinch it off. Kind of just work the rest of it around, scrunch it together, and push it into the into the bead here. This is a four millimeter bead, uh, brass bead that's on there. Um, I ran out of tungsten beads, otherwise I tied it with a tungsten one, but um, brass will have to work with a little bit extra weight on there. So now that I've got that all on there, you can also see that my hook is bent and it obviously doesn't come that way. Uh, I just take a pair of needle nose pliers and put them near the end and then give it a couple of kind of soft bends just to give it that kind of curved nymph look because um, I don't have any curved nymph hooks that are that long. So the improvise. All right, so we're going to get uh, the thread started on here. This is UTC 140 olive brown thread. Um, just seems to kind of match the color of all the stonefly nymphs that I've seen in the last few years. So that's what I start with. And I take it right back down to the bend of the hook there. And then we'll snip off the tag here. Starts out a lot like a prince nymph. We're going to use goose biots for the tails. Um, but what I like to do in order to get them to splay, uh, to spread out, is I make a little thread ball down here at the back. So I just kind of wrap over the same spot a bunch of times. And then when I tie them on, they spread out really nice along the back. All right, so just using uh, some brown goose biots. I've already taken them off of the main stem there. And uh, as per usual, some people like to tie them in together. I never seem to get them to work right when I do that, so I tie them in separately. And if I want it to be about that long, give them a good tie, one on each side, and you can see that that thread ball has made the, the tip push out to the side, and it'll do the same thing on this side for me. And of course, you gotta loosen a little bit to get the position right. That's not quite right. Pull it in a little bit more. There we go. And then just wrap those under. They just become part of the underbody. You'll never see them again after that. And I just give a couple of wraps here. I go back up to the lead uh, wraps here and I try and taper it a little bit just so I get a smoother transition when I'm getting up to that point. Now the problem with using a really long hook like this is that it's really skinny and you need some extra bulk. Just uh, tying down the ends of those goose biots isn't going to cut it. So at this point what I have to do is first off pick some of my uh, pick some wire here and uh, I'm going to use fairly thick um, black wire. I've got soft Soft copper wire in black and it's medium. Um, to take off a pretty good length of that. So maybe something like that long. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is tie this piece of wire in. It's not really gonna add much bulk. It's there for ribbing for later to give that look of segmentation. Um, but you gotta tie it in now. Otherwise, you'll see it later. Okay, now that we've got that in, I was saying that this fly needs some bulk because obviously a stone fly this size's abdomen is going to be way thicker than that. So what I did is I accidentally bought some orange thin skin which I couldn't find any real use for because I don't know a lot of orange nymphs that hang around where I fish so um, I just use it to add some bulk. 
uh, it sinks so it's not adding flotation to anything and obviously this is a nymph so we want it to sink uh, so I just kind of peel it off the backing and I tie it in and I wrap it along and that seems to give this fly the bulk it needs back here in the abdomen so I just tie it in and then just move my thread forward and I just wrap it around wrap it around the hook shank like so kind of tight here at the begin or at the uh, at near the tail and then I get a little more loose as I go up to try and create kind of that tapered look like I say it doesn't need to be pretty because you're gonna just hide it anyway it's gonna be under a bunch of uh, dubbing later so once it's tied on you just kind of work your way back like I said, it doesn't have to be exact I know it doesn't look like it really tapers very well there but we're gonna hide all that with dubbing uh, in a little bit in fact we're gonna start hiding it with dubbing right now okay so we've got our bulk there this is gonna fatten up even more a little bit later um, so uh, next thing I'm gonna use here um, sorry I skipped a step before I put the dubbing in I have other thin skin the speckled stuff and this is going to act as the top of the abdomen so it's just going to roll over um, the rest of the of the fly here once I have tied in the dubbing and there we go get it off the backing here okay so I just tie it in with the tails here as well and it's just going to hang out there while I put dubbing on and then I'm going to put it over top of the dubbing afterwards. Push that tail a little bit there. That's all right. Okay, so now that I've got that on, now I'm going to use my Golden Stone colored dubbing here. Pretty generous pinch here. You're probably going to have to do this more than once in order to get all the way up. So once we got our dubbing noodle on there, just start our wraps forward. You want to put it on pretty thick. Like I said, a stone fly of this size would be pretty thick. Right, so we have to add a little bit more here. All right. Estimated that reasonably well. So now going to pull this over okay. and that's going to act now as our um, as the top of our abdomen it's going to look pretty realistic once it's tied on there okay. so I'm just going to push it over the top and kind of hold it in place and then give it a couple wraps of thread to hold it down okay and it doesn't matter if it's not really symmetrical when you do this part okay. I'm just going to hold it there I sometimes fold it back over and give it another shot and that adds a little bit more uh, girth to the thorax area. And again, it doesn't hurt it in terms of weight or anything like that. And then what I have left here, I'll just cut off. Okay, so now we use the uh, wire we tied on previously to give us our look of segmentation. So it's acting as ribbing here. Get those spaced about evenly. And you can see that it pinches that thin skin down against the dubbing and the hook shank. Makes it look a lot neater than it did a few seconds ago. Right, if we get to there. Didn't have my thread in a very good position there. Alright. So just give a few wraps around that wire. Enough so you can helicopter it off. So now we've essentially got the abdomen done, got lots of you know, leggy looking things sitting down there. Okay. So our next step now is we've got to kind of build up the abdomen, but before we can build up the abdomen, and this is kind of a matter of personal preference, some people put rubber legs on after, I put them on before and then I kind of move around them with the dubbing. So just using some rubber legs, striped ones, speckled ones, ones with sparkles in them, it doesn't really matter. But this I think is 
kind of the kicker ingredient makes it look really really realistic now when I time in I make a little loop and then I put it over the top like this and then when I snip it I get two legs out of it uh, it just saves me doing a little bit more tying so I put it kind of over the head like that tie it down kind of loose and then just work my way back and then you kind of have to position the legs where you want them as you're doing this part so and again it doesn't really matter if they're all that symmetrical because if you had a stone fly in the river their legs would be flopping all over the place so um, it doesn't really have to be pretty it just has to be realistic looking okay. so cut those about the same length like so give this one a snip gives us a couple more legs up top and then I usually use that piece that I cut off and I tie it on again just to give another set of legs doesn't really matter kind of where they go as long as they're all there and kind of sticking out and looking leggy uh, you should try and make them all about the same length though okay, so there they are all now about the same length now obviously right now my thorax is a little thinner than my abdomen but we're going to fix that here in a second too this time we're going to add darker dubbing so now i use the antron stuff and I usually use kind of some dark brown with a little bit of kind of amberish or copperish sparkles in it. Um, kind of got a big clump there. Probably have to do two clumps here. Okay. Get that dubbing on there. It's not a quick fly. But the last time I went out was the first time I lost one. And I fished the same stonefly pattern on three or four different trips. The very same actual fly. Um, in fact, I think I showed it several times in, a, in my videos. Hey, look at this stonefly thing I tied. It's working real good. It looks a lot like these things. So I figured I'd give everybody a look at how I tie it. I mean, everybody's got their own stonefly pattern, but this just really seems to work for me. All right, so now I've got her pretty much settled down. You can see that, you know, it's, I don't even have to pick it out. The, the dubbing is all kind of sticking out there. And uh, now we'll give it kind of a quick whip finish here, and we'll add a, kind of a shell back here um, with some UV Loon Cure. So, all tied on there now. Now we're going to put on a little bit of Loon uh, UV clear finish. This is the thick stuff. It's really good for making shellbacks. And I also find it holds those legs in place. So I do pull the legs down with my fingers. And then I add a big blop of this stuff. And I kind of spread it around. It gets trapped in the dubbing, which is nice. It makes it look a little bit more realistic. But I put a big glop of it on there. And I make sure that it runs down onto the bead. Oh, like so. So there's a big, big shell on this thing. I don't know whether that makes a difference or not, but I've never tied one with it small. So now I'm going to give my fingers a tan with the UV torch here. You can see the legs stick out nice now because they're trapped under some semi-hardened UV cement, and they always say five seconds is enough. Well, if five seconds is enough, 20 seconds is better. So, there you have it. My never fail stonefly nymph. Hope you like it. Give it a tie, and I think you'll like the results. I sure have been happy with it. Thanks for watching.